Good morning, my happy little ramblers, and welcome once more to Reese Rambles. This is the official podcast of the Control Alt Reese YouTube channel. And I've noticed when I uh, when I put these out, looking at the analytics, I actually tend to lose subscribers on pretty much every single one. And I think I know why that is. Um, and it's because that the, there isn't really uh, any kind of proper separation between the the podcast content on this channel and the actual uh, actual video content. Because I've started to do some more video content on here, and I'm starting to promote it a bit more widely. And I think the people who are watching those videos are being recommended these rambles, and they're uh, they're kind of watching the first few minutes of them and thinking, "What on earth is this absolute rubbish?" But uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, YouTube doesn't uh, doesn't differentiate between the podcast people and the video people. I appreciate it. it's a very uh, it's a very uh, specific audience of uh, people who want to know what's going on in my life and behind the scenes stuff and that kind of thing. And I cover such a wide range of topics. I think some people just like to have it on in the background as background noise, which is absolutely fine. That's exactly what I do with podcasts as well. Half the I'm not even listening. In fact, my wife Catherine uh, quite often says, uh, you, "You've already listened to this one." Obviously, I'm not talking about listening to my own podcast. I'm talking about listening to uh, some of the other stuff that I listen to. She'd be like, oh, "You've already listened to this one. I've already heard this." And I'm like, "Have I?" <laughs> I just had it on in the background, you know. And I end up listening to the same podcast episodes for like three or four times um, just to take it all in. But there you go. That's that. Um, I did put out a video on this channel a while ago just explaining what Reese Rambles was. And I, I really don't want to have to split it out into a third channel. It's going to end up being far too much to manage and I'm going to be spreading myself far, far too thinly. So, uh, hey, I'll just make sure that everything I do is very clearly marked. And if you want to avoid these, uh, then by all means, you can uh, you can avoid those. And I've also started putting uh, bonus content because I, I use a very similar thumbnail, thumbnail style and stuff on the second channel videos. I started putting a little uh, a bonus content marker on those as well, just to kind of let my regulars know that they're a bit more, a bit more unstructured and a bit more sort of rambly and whatnot. But anyway, I shall persevere because the general trajectory of this channel is upwards, which is fantastic. Um, no sort of plans of, of world domination or um, you know anything like that uh, with the second channel. But uh, yeah, it, it's nice. It's nice to have kind of a second creative outlet and just if I've got something I just want to quickly film and, and talk about and, you know, couple a video together in a, a you know a couple of hours, then uh, it's great to have a platform to do that and not kind of disrupt what I'm trying to do with the main channel. What am I trying to do with the main channel? I don't know. Make good quality stuff, I guess, is the uh, is the general consensus. Anyway, I'm here. It's another weekend. I've got my uh, lovely pink T-shirt on. I'm not sure if I've, if I've uh, worn this on camera yet. So it's kind of a newer one for me. Uh, and there you go. And of course, uh, yeah, 40 years old, as mentioned. And I also mentioned that I wouldn't talk about that again. Although I did enjoy, uh, I did enjoy all the comments from uh, those of you in your 50s and perhaps a bit older, uh, saying, "Yeah, 40 is it's nothing. Yeah, don't worry about it," which is uh, absolutely true. Absolutely what I was expecting and hoping for. So thank you. And just before we get into the main uh, topic, so the main topic of this one is I, I want to. I'm going to review London. So uh, yeah, uh, back in September last year. Um, this this was before I was doing video, although I think I had photos at least in this one. Maybe I didn't. Maybe it was just the same photo all the way through. Which was the, this is the view from our window in uh, a, a hotel in San Francisco. And uh, yeah, for the benefit of the audio listeners, it's uh, it's Greta Thunberg, the uh, well known uh, Scandinavian climate camp campaigner lady. Big mural of her. Uh, she, every time we opened our uh, our curtains, um, we had her staring back at us very intently. Maybe judging us for the uh, the seven hour flight that we took to get there, but anyway, um, off the back of this, I did I did kind of a, a kind of a half joking, uh, big two part review of America. Of course, we only went to we only went to San Francisco, uh, down to LA, and then across to uh, Las Vegas. Is that my? I came here. I arrived here this morning. I should mention this. Um, just I've, I've got off on another tangent, like I always do. Uh, two of the sound deadening panels on the ceiling had fallen down, including the one that fell down last week, um, and that one is directly above my head. And I think I just heard it creak. So you never know if you uh, if you uh, watch this, um, you, you might see a big chunk of foam fall on my head. I know I keep promising that every week, but yeah. So anyway, uh, off the back of that trip, of course, we only went to the three places really. We went to you know various places in between, but uh, I did this kind of tongue in cheek review of literally everything that we did in America and called it my uh, I called it Reese Reviews America, all of it. And it, it was so big, it ended up being a two-parter. So I thought, well, I've spent, uh, I've spent what, what is it, four days in London, and I do have a lot of international listeners. And I'm, I, mean, I, I, I can't, uh, I can't claim to be an expert on all things London, but I do tend to spend a reasonable amount of time there. We do go down, um, you know, a few times a year and uh, just have a, 
a nice weekend living it up and whatnot because we live in a very rural area and yeah the whole concept of being able to just jump on a tube or into a cab or whatever and you know drive five ten minutes and go to a whatever bar or shop or whatever you want um yeah we don't have that where we live um yeah all we have is the village pub and then basically you have to drive anywhere else no uber drivers around here in our area and if you want a taxi you have to generally book it about a week in advance and uh, yeah we've actually found that they, they, they can be quite unreliable so yeah and, and there are people who of course who live in far more rural areas than we do but uh, always fun to go down to london so yes i'm going to be uh, i'm going to be talking about all the stuff that we did in london and showing you some photos and making some recommendations if you're uh, hoping to pop down there yourself uh, but also i had a video that was released in the past week and of course i always talk about those in these rambles and that was one that i very hastily put out um, just in the couple of days before we left because I, I found this old Game Boy camera that I bought. I bought it years ago to make a video and I, I got this uh, USB adapter thing. Um, I don't know if I've got it to hand. I haven't. Um, the the sub-module GB01, um, which unfortunately I found out actually when I went to record it has been, has been discontinued. Uh, but that's fine. So... Um, yeah, I, I thought, you know what, let's just quickly film this. Because a previous owner had uh, taken a load of very interesting photos uh, with that camera and they were still on there. And I want to wipe it because I want to do I want to do like a video on the Game Boy camera and, and get hold of the printer and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I, uh, I thought I'd do I would document that finally. And, uh, yeah, you know, it would uh, put me in a position to be able to uh, make a new start with that new piece of hardware. Yeah, 775 views in... Uh, how long's it been up? 48 hours? Oh, I don't never know how to read these stats, but uh, yeah, look at that. Some pretty decent retention on that one. 68% of viewers still watching around the 30 second mark, and then it's I mean it's reasonably flat. There's always that uh, kind of descent as you go along. And yeah, 14 new subscribers, which is why, why it doesn't bother me too much when I, I end up losing a couple off the back of each ramble. And an estimated revenue of £1.58, which of course for us uh, as pro uh, full-time YouTubers is uh, that that's the figure that matters so yeah one pound 58 I mean that wouldn't uh, that wouldn't even buy you a pint in London would it but there you go um hey it's uh, you know not bad off the back of 775 views I don't I think I accidentally enabled the mid-roll ads on this one because YouTube's a bit sneaky and kind of tries to trick you into enabling them and I think after after like the first half an hour I kind of went in and checked and was like oh no it's it's showing people you know, like five or six ads in a in a fourteen minute video. So I actually turned those off. So uh, yeah, apologies if if you're one of those people. Was not deliberate on my part. Uh, but as discussed previously, of course, I do I do enable the pre roll and post roll ads because it means that YouTube actually promotes the video to people. Uh, I mean, we can have a look at the reach here. Yeah, I mean, ten thousand five hundred people. That's that's quite a healthy reach for a channel of this size. Anyway, that's enough about the uh, Game Boy video. Uh, let's get on and talk about the. Uh, about the London stuff. So onwards with my review of the whole of London. And of course, the first place to start, the most logical place to start, I think, would be the hotel that we stayed in this time. Now, this wasn't the first time that we'd actually stayed in this hotel. We stayed there uh, in July last year for my friend Sam's wedding. If you remember the uh, the ever blackmailable Sam from uh, last week's episode uh, to his lovely wife, Rachel. Of course, she wasn't his wife um, before the wedding, but now she is, if that makes sense. Um, and uh, when we actually booked the hotel at the time last year, it was actually the Hard Rock Hotel, if you know the uh, Hard Rock brand, of course, the uh, Hard Rock cafes and whatnot. And they have uh, they have a chain of hotels across the uh, across the world. And they're uh, they're actually like a licensed thing. They kind of pay for the Hard Rock branding and stuff. And uh, this hotel in London, the, the Cumberland, as it used to be, had uh, had been the Hard Rock Hotel for a few years. And uh, yeah, for some reason, uh, evidently, between us booking it and us actually arriving, they decided to remove all of the Hard Rock branding and uh, give us a bit of a refund and whatever else. And we, we kind of, we weren't really sure what to expect back when we stayed there last summer. We kind of thought, oh, is it just going to be kind of a, a bit of a boring, normal hotel? Uh, and actually, it's, it's, still, it's still a very cool place and it's still a very cool place now. Um, you know, just looking at a picture of the reception here, which I took last year. Um, you know, they've got these illuminated drumsticks hanging over the uh, the check-in desk, and you've got these guitar uh, barricades and things, and you can see like the artwork and stuff in the background. They've got like these glass. I think they were the glass display cases. If you've ever, if you've ever been to a hard rock cafe, they have like rock memorabilia and like famous people's guitars that they've actually used on stage and stuff like that. And yeah, they've, they've still got all of that kind of stuff. Got display cases and for those and. Uh, Filled them with uh, bits of pop art and, and cool music related stuff. Uh, they've got a live stage where they have bands on every night um, in the main reception area. 
They've got the backstage area, which is uh, kind of my uh, my favourite bit. If you have one of these sort of slightly uh, higher end rooms, uh, you get access to this backstage area, which is a bit quieter, and they've got like unlimited free uh, drinks and and uh, and food in there. And yes, that does include alcoholic drinks. You pour your own uh, JD and Coke and that kind of stuff, which is cool. And yeah, you can you can uh, borrow one of these little I mean, these little Crosley record player things and, and take it up to your room and listen to some records. I'm sure the audio files in the audience have uh, you know all switched off now. But uh, uh, and you, you can also you can also hire guitars, which is quite interesting. Which I guess is another kind of holdover from their uh, their hard rock days. And uh, yeah, here's Sam. This, this this was actually one in the VIP area, but here's Sam playing a uh, a Fender Jaguar. We we're trying to work out what all the switches were doing. I think this was actually the morning of the wedding as well. Uh, he didn't he didn't dress like that for the wedding, uh, by the way. But uh, yeah, the uh, the Cumberland Hotel really uh, nicely located. It's at the end of Oxford Street, uh, right by Marble Arch, just on the corner of Hyde Park. You can actually walk out the front door and uh, cross the road, and you're actually in Hyde Park, which is really nice. And you know, it's kind of located close to Oxford Street, like I said, and Mayfair and. Uh, you know, so quite nice uh, areas of London, and it's uh, it's literally on the same corner as the as the Marble Arch tube stop. So you can just hop on the tube and uh, go anywhere you like, which is really cool. And about five minutes down the road from Bond Street uh, tube station as well, which has uh, an Elizabeth Line stop, which we did actually use to go to uh, Canary Wharf, uh, which I will be talking about a little bit later on in this ramble. So yeah, great hotel, Cumberland Hotel. Really well located, really nice uh, hotel with a bit of a, a bit of a music and a bit of a rock theme, and quite quite nice and sort of stylish and high end and modern as well, which is really cool. So that would be my first recommendation uh, on our uh, our little trip around London. So while we were there, we went to see a show. Now, now I'm not really big into um, like musicals and stage productions and and theatre stuff. Uh, we've we've been to a few things. We went to we went to see like Back to the Future the musical and. Um, uh, well, what was the other one? Uh, Groundhog Day, and uh, yeah, a couple of other things that we've kind of seen, but uh, not really, not really our scene necessarily. Although I always enjoy it when we do go, and uh, we're kind of we're kind of hoping to go and see some more stuff in the near future. But yes, uh, my my wife and I are big fans of like Studio Ghibli and, and Japanese stuff, as I'm sure you'll know. And uh, my neighbour Totoro is showing at the Barbican, I think, until uh, until the end of April. Well, well, we'll have a look, shall we? Oh, 23rd of March. Oh wow! So it's only on for another five days, and yeah. So she uh, very kindly bought me some uh, some excellent tickets right in the middle uh, to go and see this at the Barbican Centre, and the Barbican Centre is uh, quite an interesting place in its own right. Um, oh, I can hear that ceiling tile just about to fall on my head, uh, and, and this um, we'll talk about the uh, we'll talk about the, uh, the the stage show first, and the whole thing is it's absolutely fantastic, like the. The, you know the acting in it is fantastic. The music—it's all live music. They've got the actual band there on stage performing all of the stuff live, and it's really—if um, you're familiar with the original story—it's it, really kind of um, faithful to the original story. Um, you know all, all the various different scenes that you remember from the film, and it's just—it's just delightful. I think is is the word for it. It's just a really nice thing. Uh, quite long. It was—it was actually in two parts. There was an intermission after the first hour and a half. And then the second half was like an hour as well, and there were there were people there were some quite small uh, children who were actually really well behaved. I, I must say, um, you know, different uh, I don't know different class of people maybe who uh, who go to the theatre. But um, yeah, it was uh, it, it was really good. The, just just the staging of it. I see. There's um, I was just very quickly watching the trailer here, and I see there's a couple of things that they didn't show. Um, some of the puppetry and stuff, which was really impressive. Of course, they want to save the uh, the kind of the big reveal, so people actually go and see it in person and I can highly recommend it. It's absolutely fantastic. The Barbican Centre, first time I've ever been there and uh, yeah, quite a quite an iconic London venue in itself. It's the home of the London Symphony Orchestra and the BBC Symphony Orchestra uh, and also the home of the Royal Shakespeare Company apparently. Like I said, ne never been there before myself. Uh, this big uh, 1980s uh, brutalist construction, lots of concrete and uh, actually it's quite nice. It's got a lot of character and it's not... Uh, you know, not not the kind of building that uh, I'd really explored before. It's it's it's, it's huge, um, and, and very interesting to check out, as well as of course the actual shows that they have on there. So yeah, uh, my neighbour Totoro, absolutely fantastic, a really good production, and really enjoyed it. And it has uh, kind of spurred us on to want to go and see some other things as well, some other shows in London. So uh, yeah, I'll uh, have to keep you posted on those.
And then just a, a little nod to the evening's activities after this, because I think this is quite interesting. Uh, we went straight from there to a place called Lina, Lina Stores in Soho. Now, this is an Italian deli. Uh, they've got uh, all of your pasta and your, your meats and your cheeses and stuff hanging up. And you go in there and there are actual like people in there buying the stuff. It's an actual proper, uh, a proper deli, as you might expect. But uh, if you make a booking, you can actually go to their underground uh, bar, like a speakeasy type cocktail bar, which, um, yeah, we, we actually kind of struggled to find the place because we got a taxi to the place and stepped out and we were like, well, this is this is just like a deli here. This, this is, surely this isn't right. Surely the bar's somewhere else. And then we actually went in and, and someone kind of came up to us. Uh, evidently, get a lot, they get a lot of uh, very confused people showing up at their door and uh, kind of ushered us through this little doorway and down these stairs. And uh, yeah, you've got like a full-blown cocktail bar downstairs, which is uh, it's really cool. I mean, we've, we've been to stuff like this before. But Catherine's a really big fan of uh, your kind of uh, speakeasy type stuff. And it's also not the first one that we went to over the weekend. But uh, yeah, not one that I'd heard of. And uh, yeah, interesting experience. Um, good atmosphere in there, very lively, lots of people, very loud, um, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, good cocktails, good cocktails. That's uh, that's kind of the main thing, isn't it? And then after that, for dinner, uh, we went to, just around the corner to a place called Sticks and Sushi. Again, not my not my first time there, but um, yeah, really good kind of sushi chain based in London. And I can highly recommend them if you are uh, if you are ever in the city. They do uh, they do do some excellent uh, sushi. But uh, yeah, I just thought I would uh, give a bit of a shout out to those two. Uh, evening activities after we'd been to the theatre and uh, yeah another two things that I can definitely recommend and of course I, I will uh, I will of course put links to all the stuff that I talk about uh, down in the description if you are looking for uh, looking for some inspiration. So onwards with the big London review and of course the second day was my actual birthday so let's talk about all the stuff that I did on my birthday but first let's talk about the people who actually joined me which was uh, which was really nice really nice surprise to have some friends show up on the second day. My good friend Phil, um, he was. It turned out he was actually in town because he'd been to see Totoro the Totoro the night before. Um, we we saw like the daytime show in the matinee, and uh, he'd he'd actually been in the evening, and of course wasn't able to say anything to me about it at all because the whole thing was a big surprise, um, and he didn't want to spoil the surprise. But um, yeah, it maybe would have been nice to have known that he was in town the night before, so he could have joined us for for sushi and stuff. But um, yeah, really cool to have him join us for the uh, the last few days. And of course, my good friends Sam and Rachel. We all checked into the uh, to the Cumberland Hotel once more, and it was all really cool to uh, have everyone there for uh, for my actual birthday, for my fortieth. So, what did we do? Well, we did um, we we, we did uh, a lot of drinking. Um, I should probably say. So, first up, we went to Canary Wharf, which isn't. Uh, isn't really known as a, a tourist destination. It's kind of it's kind of the financial heart of London. It's kind of best known for being home to uh, financial institutions like HSBC and uh, uh, JP Morgan and, and you know some of these big banking corporations. And yeah, it's it's not really a place I'd been to before, so I wasn't really sure what to expect. And I, I knew there were a lot of um, quite fancy restaurants and stuff around there because obviously there's a, a huge amount of people that work there, huge huge amount of money uh, sloshing around. So um, you know, some quite fancy upmarket things to do. Uh, thankfully, we didn't uh, we didn't go to a place that cost thousands because uh, that would have been a bit silly. But uh, we did we did go to uh, this place, Six by Nico, which I can highly recommend. And it, I've just discovered poking around their website, that, uh, that they're actually a, a national chain. So they're in Aberdeen, Birmingham, Belfast, Cardiff, Dublin, uh, Edinburgh, Glasgow, yada yada. And they do, um, they basically rotate their menu every few weeks and, and do a different region or a different part of the world. And they're currently doing Vietnamese, which is what we had. Really, really good. So there was a, a set menu, um, it's a six course set menu, uh, all really good stuff. Of course, you have to have the wines with the set menu. It's uh, it's only uh, it's only the right thing to do on your birthday, isn't it? And uh, yeah, just enjoyed it a lot. Just really kind of nice, uh, nice restaurant. Really good uh, Vietnamese food. Of course, we went to Vietnam, uh, Vietnam, <laughs> Vietnam uh, ten years ago this year. So uh, always a big fan of any kind of Asian, uh, Vietnamese type stuff. Uh, really good. And then uh, the the place we went after this was was literally just around the corner, and it's a place called Fair Game, or Fair Game. Good, uh, good play on words there. And it's all like fairground games. So you've got like, you know, shooting at targets and uh, whack-a-mole and throwing basketballs into hoops and 
Uh, there's like, um, I think there's like eight or so of these big fairground games that you could play. Really cool thing being that they were all basically five players simultaneously. And of course, there were five of us there as a group. I can highly, highly recommend this. It, it was loads of fun. They've got two big bars, one at either end, um, very much uh, encouraging people to, uh, you know, uh, get drunk and throw things around. And it's all based on a booking system, so you get a time slot, so it's not overcrowded when you're in there. You don't have to queue very long for anything. And they've got this really clever RFID scoring system, so you get like a wristband and you, you sign up on the website or through their app, and you, you get a, a leaderboard for your group, which of course I won because, uh, you know, I'm the best. And uh, maybe, they, maybe, maybe they let me win because it was my birthday. But yeah, really good food. They've got street food stalls there, burgers and pizzas and tacos and nachos and, and, and all of that. And just just lots lots of lots of uh, sort of really well designed and well thought out games. Um, you know, you get a couple of rounds on each one, so you can kind of get your eye in on the first one, and then uh, you know you can <laughs> you can uh, try and beat your friends. And yeah, just just something completely different and something completely unexpected. I think for that part of London, um, like I say, it's not not really a touristy area, but uh, really busy, uh, really loud, lots of fun, and enjoyed that a lot. I definitely recommend that one. And then uh, from there, we decided we, we were heading back to the hotel and we decided to go and check out go check out one of our favourite places, uh, which is a, a shop, a wine shop called Hedonism Wines. And I wasn't sure whether to mention this, but um, yeah, uh, let's talk about it. So they uh, they're based in Mayfair and you would think that that would mean that they would be um, very expensive. Now, actually, they're not. They, they, they do um, they do kind of a really big. Um, range of stuff ranging from you know five ten pound a bottle all the way up to I mean you walk around in the shop and they've got bottles in there that are like ten fifteen twenty thousand pounds for a bottle of wine they've got um, they've got some sections that you have to actually ask to be let into um, and they will only let you in there supervised I haven't been into uh, haven't been into those so I'm not quite sure what they've got stashed away in there but uh, I can only imagine. So really interesting place just to go and have a nose around if you like your wine. Um, but they have these uh, they have these enematic machines. I have to see if I can find the pictures. Let me just let me just have a look. There we go. So they've got these uh, these enematic machines, and basically you top a card up and you can go and taste wine. So it's like a big wine tasting. Help yourself. Uh, the staff are all you know kind of milling around and they're quite happy to talk to you about stuff. That all of the stuff that's in there are kind of their own personal picks. And it means that if you want to know, you know, if you want to know what one of those two thousand pound or five thousand pound bottles of wine tastes like, but you don't want to buy a five thousand pound bottle of wine, you know, you can spend ten, fifteen pounds. I appreciate it; it is a lot of money, but then it was it was a special birthday, and you can, uh, you, you know, you can have a, you can have a small taste of it, which is quite interesting. You know, it's not not something that you, as plebs, generally get to experience. So I really like it there, one of my favourite places. We've been to a few organised tastings there. They had uh, Roebuck there, uh, which was, uh, the, they're an English English wine producer, uh, doing a tasting, got talking to the very nice man, and uh, obviously uh, told him it was my birthday and he gave us some extra glasses afterwards, which was which was very nice of him. But uh, yeah, so that was, uh, that was kind of on the wander back to the hotel. And then we went out again in the evening to a place called the Italian Greyhound, which was a, it's a restaurant just around the corner from the hotel. And also, I can highly recommend it. So um, yeah, I will link to all of that. Uh, Italian food, um, nothing too particularly complicated or uh, fancy, but uh, yeah, just, you know, high quality stuff and uh, good company and all of that. And an excellent way to spend my 40th birthday. So onwards and upwards with our third and final full day in London. I hope you're picking up some good recommendations for stuff to do in uh, in our wonderful capital city, or maybe you're just enjoying listening to me uh, raving about how, how good the weekend was. Um, either way, it's good that you're still with me. But uh, yeah, so we had two more friends come and join us on the Saturday. And my good friends, Holly and Andy, really nice to see them. They don't get out much because they've got small children. Uh, but yeah, they uh, had all sorts of issues with uh, with childminders and stuff, but did manage to get something together and actually actually come down and see us, which was really, really nice, really good to see them. And I was told that uh, I had to wear 1940s attire for this one. Now, I don't actually have any photos of myself in my uh, Mr. Toad uh, Wind in the Willows waistcoat. And uh, I know you find that hard to believe and you probably think that I'm trying to hide it from you out of embarrassment or something. But uh, trust me, um, you know, some of the personal stuff that I've shared on here, I hope you... Uh, 
I hope you, <laughs> you realise that uh, that isn't the case. But um, yeah, anyway, yeah, so I knew that it was going to be 1940s themed, but didn't, didn't really know much more about it than that. And yeah, we ended up at a place called Cahoots. Now, we've been here before. I've actually been here before with my wife. A wonderful uh, place. I'm actually on their mailing list and they, they keep emailing me constantly and reminding me of how good it is. Um, yeah, a bit of an unusual one for me, but um, when we went previously, it, we, we just went for cocktails and it's in this, it's in uh, a place called Kingly Court uh, in Carnaby, so just off Carnaby Street, which is a really cool part of London anyway, definitely well worth a visit. Have a little wander down uh, down Carnaby Street. And it's basically an old uh, disused London Underground station and ticket hall. Uh, we were actually in the Underground station part and they've got like a carriage that you can sit in. And it's just um, it's just really cool, you know. It's all like 1940s kind of theme, wartime theme. Uh, of course, it was an air raid shelter during the war, and they've kind of got part of it set up to replicate that. So they've got like the bunk beds and stuff, which is the area that we were sat in. And it's just um, it's just really well done and just really nice, and, and you know, some really really nice cocktails and stuff as well. But what I wasn't expecting was that they actually had some entertainment on this weekend, which I hadn't seen before. And they had um, what they call their black market knees up and quiz, um, essentially. So, uh, yeah, um, you know, you basically sit around in, in costume and, and and drink cocktails and do this uh, do this quiz, which covers stuff from like classic movies to, you know, the, the singing um, like modern songs in 1940s style and trying to work out what they are. Stuff like that. It was loads of fun. Um, I was teamed up with my friend Andy and we came last, dead last, out of literally everyone there. We got eight points um, out of like 30. <laughs> um, uh, we, did win some, uh, we did win some rather disgusting shots uh, for our troubles. Not quite sure what they were, but uh, it, it was great fun. I got dragged up and uh, forced to act out a scene with someone else uh, whose birthday it also was. Uh, but hey, you know, you know I'm a natural showman, so of course took it all in my stride. And yeah, so th that was really good. Highly recommend that. It's a good place anyway. You know, so it's quite a fun place to go and visit, and you know, it's quite a fun place to just go and have a look around and, and just see, uh, yeah, an old original disused underground station. It's not something you see every day, is it? Um, so yeah, I thought it was a really nice time. Um, of course, Phil uh, went all out with the hat and the uh, yeah, the, the the things, the braces, and everything, um, looking a bit like Dick Tracy or something. Always, always above and beyond with Phil. And we went round the corner to a place called Kintan, which was an authentic Japanese barbecue. Um, yeah, authentic Japanese barbecue. If you're familiar with the concept, uh, you all sit around the table. You all have a, uh, a grill thing in the middle and they bring out plates and plates of meat and vegetables and things. And you slap them on the grill and it just keeps coming and it keeps coming forever. It just keeps coming and it don't stop coming. And uh, yeah, um, so that was really good. Definitely recommend that if there's a big group of you and you want to want to sit and uh, fry your own meat for a couple of hours and, and drink lots of uh, lots of asahi, then can definitely highly recommend that. Of course, we'll link to it as with everything else. And yeah, that was uh, that was that. Um, and immediately after that, we'd, we'd been telling uh, we'd been telling my friend Andy all about uh, about hedonism where we'd been the, the day before. Not the first time we told him about it either, so he demanded that we take him there, uh, which, to be fair, I wasn't going to complain about. And yes, we uh, availed ourselves of the uh, enigmatic uh, wine tasting machine once more. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty much the end. Uh, the end of the uh, of the evening. Oh, well, certainly uh, that's where the pictures stop. Anyway, we went back to the hotel. Oh yes, I should say that uh, Rachel made this really nice uh, cake topper. Uh, with uh, you know, a legend since 1984. I've given away uh, given away my date of birth and everything, of course, uh, on these rambles. And if you keep listening for long enough, I'll probably give you my uh, my mother's maiden name and all my other personally identifying information as well. So uh, yeah, maybe there'll be a quiz or maybe you can steal my steal my identity at the end. But um, yeah, that was uh, quite a fun, <laughs> quite a fun, quite a tiring and long day again. But um, yeah, good day spent with friends in London. And then on to uh, the third, the fourth, the final morning, and then it's home time. So just another couple of things. And uh, yeah, something really, really interesting and weird on the last day. So our last day in London and heading over towards Covent Garden, actually, uh, for something very weird and very peculiar and very oddly British, which I think if you're a fan of my kind of stuff... Um, you, you might appreciate, although it's much cleverer than anything that I do. But uh, yeah, if you saw my video, if you saw my video last year about the Musée Mécanique in San Francisco, 
It's, uh, it's this big museum that's full of uh, mechanical arcade games, penny arcade machines, um, you know, slot penny pusher machines and arcade games, pinball games, musical things that you put money in and they, they play and all these kind of weird and wonderful contraptions. And I, I just love I just love a good contraption, you know, um, and I'm sure you're very much the same. And if you're in London and you're in the uh, Covent Garden area-ish, uh, uh, then this is definitely well worth checking out. So this is the Novelty Automation Museum, which I'd actually heard of, and it's something that, that's been on my list for quite a while. I think this has been around since, like, 2002. And it's this guy, uh, Tim Hunkin is the name of the guy, and he builds all of these weird games. Um, you know, a, a lot of them have... So they're, they're very mechanical, they're very hands-on, they're very kind of <laughs> cobbled together, I guess. Um, Wallace and Gromit style, I guess. But they also have, you know, a lot of them kind of have quite clever sort of satirical uh, messages behind them and stuff. And they're, they're a lot of fun to play as well, of course, which is the, the very important thing. But yeah, really peculiar. I particularly enjoyed this one, the uh, the personal nuclear reactor, where you have to try and get the fuel rods into the uh, into the nuclear reactor. Um, so yeah, that that was kind of fun. And there's there's like a money laundering one and uh, some other weird stuff. Don't want to don't want to spoil it too much, but um, it's a good uh, you know it's a good hour or so. It's all token operated, so you go in and you buy a bucket full of uh, tokens. And of course, the uh, token dispenser is uh, also a weird contraption. Um, yeah, like I say, uh, there's uh, uh, this Pong exercise bike um, powered Pong machine, um, which is loads of fun. There's a thing that's like a uh, a satirical take on Amazon, working in an Amazon fulfillment center, where you kind of have to run around like a maniac trying to pick people's orders, and and you get fired at the end of it. And you know, it's just it's just a fun little place, and it's this tiny little uh, this tiny little uh, venue, little shop. Um, you know, it was full of people when we went, but uh, all very good natured and uh, quite good fun. And yeah, I can, it, it, it's just it's just brilliant. It it really is just a lot of fun and uh, very kind of twee and very uh, very amusing in that uh, in that kind of British way. Lots of really good uh, kind of satirical posters around the place as well. So definitely uh, definitely recommend that. And uh, like I say, the games the games were a lot of fun to play as well. And then uh, yeah, then uh, we went around the corner to a place called Eat Tokyo, which I hadn't heard of. Lots of Japanese and kind of Asian-inspired food this weekend, as you've probably seen. Uh, this place was literally around the corner, completely unplanned. We, ju we just kind of, kind of walked past it and thought, yeah, let's get some lunch. And yeah, it turns out this is actually a chain. Um, they're all over the place. They, they do actually have some, uh, some, some restaurants in Tokyo itself as well. And yeah, I can highly recommend it. Had the giant sushi party boat and just uh, a great way to round out a, a weekend, really. Um... And so, yeah, that's uh, that was pretty much the weekend. Uh, one thing, uh, one person that I do want to give a very big shout out to is uh, is a guy called Imran, who was our Uber driver, uh, because we got to the end of the day, went back to the hotel, and we thought, yeah, yeah, yeah maybe time to sort of head home now. And we checked the uh, we checked the train times, and literally everything was either delayed or cancelled. Everything running out of Euston was completely messed up, and it wasn't looking like there was going to there were going to be any trains for the foreseeable future. Um, so yeah, we decided to get an Uber all the way back from London because we just didn't have any other any other choice really. Um, we tried to get a different line coming out of St Pancras to uh, up to Leicester or other kind of local station. That was even worse. Everything was actually cancelled out of there. So no idea what was going on with the trains. But uh, yeah, Imran, the Uber driver, very very kindly drove us all the way home, a two hour journey, which was very cool of him. So thank you very much uh, in his in his white Prius. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that uh, little uh, little tour around London. Some kind of interesting things to check out. Uh, as mentioned, of course, I will link all of those if you want to have a look at any of those. Uh, but yeah, all, all really highly recommended and a very good weekend, a very good way of uh, kind of seeing in my 40th. So yeah, that's that. That's the end of, uh, of this ramble. Of course, normal service, including video of the week, which I haven't forgotten about. Uh, will resume next week, but I thought I'd go over all of this stuff while it was still fresh in my mind. And, uh, yeah, if you ever want to kind of meet up with me uh, down in London one weekend, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe we should organise something. Maybe that would be quite cool. We could check out some some weird and wonderful stuff and have a few drinks and, and have a jolly old time. But uh, that's all I've got for you for now. Thank you ever so much for watching slash listening slash whatevering. And yeah, I'll see you again next week. Bye. <laughs>